You think we're going to beat all these games? Nope. Backlog Boys. No, probably not. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey. It's Dark Cloud again. We are going to put some people in their houses. Yes. Um, which sounds really interesting. It's homecoming. This guy named Couscous, man. What? Mysterious creature who loves candy. All right. Okay. Um, interesting. I don't think we have anywhere to put these people. Does that mean we're missing places? Yeah, we're still missing a house somewhere. Um, we can put this well together, though. Look at all these stairs, man. Uh, we don't have a roof, but we have the torch. Do you say roof or roof? I say roof because okay. I'm from the south. And do you say roof? I think you say raff. Raff? No. I, say, I, say, I think I say roof. Like, I'm going to go clean out the, the gutter on the roof. Okay. So, let's see. We got one well on this side. Let's put another well on this side. That makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Give her a check it out. There's a lot more, like, industry in this, even though this is, like, a more remote location. Yeah, I'm just so much more unclear on where people want me to put stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. But I guess once you have everybody and all those question marks are lifted, it kind of makes more sense. Because, like, this guy, he says he wants to be... Hey, another gourd. He says he wants to be near water. And I don't, I can't get him any closer. Oh, now he can hear it. Okay, cool. Well, I take back all the bad things I said about you, deaf ass mayor, <laughs> lion head, sad guy. Um, let's see if this guy's happy. Yes, yeah, he says he wants to be near Peanut Pond. What's that? I thought that's this because it looks like a peanut. It does look like a peanut. But maybe that's not considered a pond. Maybe he means this one. That one kind of looks like a peanut too. Well, let's move him over there and that see what he says. That one actually looks like. Go back. What? That one looks like a. It looks like a worm from Worms. It looks like a um. There's a chest right here. See it? Looks like a cocoon from like the one that transforms into uh, or evolves into Beedrill. Oh, fish candy. Oh yeah, Kakuna. Kakuna. There we go. Matata. Kakuna. Boom, more defense for Toasty. Ooh. I wonder what the item that increases uh, Cookie's defense is. You know what? I'm going to go look in his house. Hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was one in there waiting for us. Yeah? Yeah. A little Easter Let's, egg. Let's uh, have a look-see. A little piece of candy. Because remember, we are... Mmm. Excuse me. Is that an Oreo? Please excuse me. Um, we finished <laughs> off the basic Oreos that we're starting to turn, and we've gotten back to our cinnamon bun Oreos, and they are just... They have not started to turn. Premium chicken. Do you think that's what he I think eats? it is. I think it's a big chicken leg. <laughs> that's, that's... Oh, no. This is like the best healing item in the game. Oh, it's like a food item. Yeah. Um, should we give Cookie another gourd to match him up with Toasty? Yeah. Okay. Boom shakalaka. Eat that gourd. <laughs> What's a gourd? A gourd? Yeah. Well, like squash and uh, pumpkins oh. are gourds, but a gourd is also like, I think it's like a, like a type of pottery. I think it refers to like the shape and that it's hollow on the inside. Okay. So I think in this context, it means it's like a container. Okay. I think it's like a type of container. It's like a, it's like a canteen. Yeah. Yeah. Or a, uh, what's the other neat word for... It's like a Moss Eisley cantina. A Moss Eisley. Never is a hive of villainy. Direct quote. Yeah. <laughs> Verbatim. Uh, so we can't place anything else right now, can we? I don't think so. Looks like we need another place. We do. We need another house. We got more trees. Oh, yeah. Let's talk to Tree Guy over here. Because he was like, oh, I need some more trees. Tree McGee? Yeah, I need some more trees. Were it's... you trying to put yourself on the staircase? I was. That, was, that would have been really cool if it worked. His house is surrounded by trees. Oh, there's another chest. Maybe he got it finally. Maybe there's like a delay. Oh, it's musician. Yeah, yeah, now he likes it. Cool. If you ever run into that guy who's dead, let me know. Yeah, that... Kid's father that you're traveling with who's yeah. 
brutally murdered and his friends left well, him to thanks die. Thanks for the throbbing cherry, Cacao. Okay, uh, who else we got? The owl we know is happy. Let's talk to these folks. Bunbuku. Bunbuku. Wind. Do we need that? Just a box of wind. I think it's a gem. You just open it up. It's, just it's a tornado in a box. It's a, a torrent. Look out. A torrent? That would involve water as well. Would it? Yeah, a torrent is like a storm. It's not just okay, it's wind. a gale. A gale. There you there go. There we go. Busting out some RPG words on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk. Oh, they're still in this predicament. Or Hunger Games characters. You got mad at me. Oh, that's right. Coiled like a shell in white in color, and it was really sweet. Candy. What is that? Really sweet. It's a syringe. Uh, <laughs> Just stick them with some. And I can't get this item behind him until I meet that condition. It's kind of cool. I feel like that's going to be something that we're going to find in the dungeon. Yeah. I don't think it's an item that we can buy. I don't think so either. I'll check the shop. But I don't remember. God, it really does look like a trailer. It really is a trailer. Like, there's no... I love the way it looks on the inside, though. It reminds yeah. me of the cafe from the the Wii version of Animal Crossing. Which I'm sure you never played. I've played it with other people, but never on my own. So I don't remember a whole lot of it. You played Animal Crossing with someone else? Kind of. Like, a little bit. Huh. That's weird. Yeah. Never heard of doing that. It's such a lonely game. Yeah. Kind of is. I watched someone play a little bit of it. Okay. Before. Oh, hey, look. Sweet. Doing it. More defense. A kirk -ter. Oh, yeah. Tell me your Captain Kirk joke. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I'll tell um, you my joke. Oh, wait. One sec. Oh, that's so off. Oh, yeah. we got another Sky Hunter. We need that. God, that's good. That's gross. Okay. He's great. So, Mr. Crabtree. How many ears does Captain Kirk have? Ears? Yeah. As in what he uses to listen to things? Yeah, ears. Um, I don't know. Two? He has three. A left ear, a right ear, and a final frontier. Wow. <laughs> you heard it here fo first, folks. Final front ear. I, I, <laughs> got, I am right there with you, Vaughn. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I was hanging out with my buddy Steve the other day, and I had just... Wait, Steve the Slingshot? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I just realized... Oh, look, he's talking about the moon people. Brown Boo Village. It's at the far end of the woods. Is there a metropolis in this game? Like a... Like a big city? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool, actually. It would be. Um, but I don't know. I don't remember there being one. Oh, the grass cake! I bet that's it! For cooks... Yeah, look at it. It looks like a, you know, uh, what are those called? The snowballs? Yeah. Where it's like a devil's food cake with the you know, frosting and the coconut shavings. It's like a green snowball. All right. Hey, Cookie desperately needed that. Yeah, he really did. Oh, also, he needs one of these. Oh, no. Don't feed it to him. There we go. <laughs> Come on, Cookie, eat it. So I was hanging out with my buddy Steve the other day. Okay. And I discovered I could do this wicked flamingo impersonation. And he's like, he was getting really annoyed because I wouldn't stop with it. And he's like, man, that's it. That's the last time. You got to stop doing that flamingo impersonation. And I had to put my foot down. Four thirteen. Oh, Here we come. Man. <laughs> I just like those jokes. Comment on whose was better. Oh, I got to give my buddy Tim credit for that joke. He didn't come up with it either, I don't think, but he's the one who told it to me. Um, and it, I, I had a similar reaction to the one that Vaughn just had. That was. Uh... Oh, I wish y'all could see the look on his face right now. It's priceless. Let's throw this up there. That, that was good. Good, good joke. <laughs> Dude, look how much weapon HP this thing has. 68. Yeah. That is killing. Oh, like a villain. I'd be chilling. Let's level up this weapon. Chilling like Krillin. Dude, Krillin is such an underappreciated character. Like, especially for folks who only watched Dragon Ball Z and not Dragon Ball. Did you ever think? <laughs> Krillin was my favorite for a while. 
Yeah, just because he's because he's like shorter and like kind he's of the, the dark horse kind of. He's just like the not the favorite. Mm -hmm. I always liked people who weren't the favorite. It's kind of the definition of dark horse. <laughs> but you know, thanks. <laughs> um, did you ever think like wrongfully that uh, Tien and Krillin were somehow like related because they were bald? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, like their eyes. I mean, I, as all I, the characters' eyes are for the most part the same, so like their sure. face looks the I mean, same. Yeah, almost you know? all the faces are the same because Toriyama just draws that one face. All right, hopefully we get to go to this back floor and we can fight some of those guys who give crazy abs. Okay. And we can fight them with loops. <laughs> um. I definitely. What does as, abs mean? Uh, it's like abilities. I, I guess I, that's the best I can come up with. But yeah, back to the DBZ thing. I, I definitely, as a kid who only knew Dragon Ball Z and was watching it when it was kind of currently airing, um, I... One hit? One hit, dude. 82 Ooh. damage. I, I kind of lumped Umpire. all of the the non-Saiyan characters into like this group of like the less strong people that were kind of useless. You know, like... like Tien and Yamcha and Chaozu, who were like mm -hmm. dead for a lot of the time, anyways. Yeah. Um, and I kind of lumped Krillin in with them for a while, but he was the one that was like a little bit stronger than them. Yeah. But like closer to them than like to, than like Goku, Goku and Gohan and Piccolo. Yeah. Um, I also like Piccolo a lot more this time around. Yeah. I'm watching through DBZ again. Okay. Because I finished Dragon Ball and I decided I wanted to watch through Z again. I'm in the Frieza saga right now. Okay. Um. I forgot how much I liked the Frieza saga. I liked it. Like, I feel like, I mean, I think it's always kind of thought of as the quintessential DBZ saga. Because mm -hmm. it's the one where Goku goes Super Saiyan, and, you know, it's like the first, like, really, like, uh, really, like, despair villain, you know? Like, where they really think they can't win. Mm -hmm. um, but it also stuck in my mind as being a lot more, like, long in the tooth than it actually is. Like, everybody loves to say, like, oh, yeah, it takes Goku, like, eight episodes to turn Super Saiyan, and, oh, it lasts for so long, and... But, like, it really... It really doesn't. No. You know? Like, <laughs> I just watched through it. Like, it's funny, because when Goku turns Super Saiyan, it's actually super random and sudden. Like, it just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, he's getting his butt kicked... You know how it usually is, where, like, everything looks to be lost, and yep. then somebody finds, like, a new power and allows them to win. And, like, Goku's getting completely trashed, um, and I think it's the part where, where Gohan, like, is supposed to be leaving the planet on the ship, because Goku told him to, mm -hmm. and then he disobeys him to, like, try to go back and save him, because he thinks he's dead, mm -hmm. um, or dying. And then, yeah, like, Goku's, like totally at the end of his rope and then all of a sudden he just gets super mad because he realizes that if he doesn't kill Frieza like everyone in the universe is gonna die and then he just turns Super Saiyan in like the course of one episode hmm. it, it, there's like no build up to it it's kind of weird because you think of it as like this huge moment um but, like a defining moment yeah yeah I still think the Cell Saga is my favorite though yeah yeah I really like the androids, and I really... Yeah, the androids that I liked. All yeah, and I really like the uh, the music, the Funimation music that they gave to the first form of Cell. Okay. There's just something really cool about it. It uses, like, a vinyl rip drum loop or something like that that's just super catchy. Um, and then also, I love, like, Gohan is really cool, and it's like the saga where he, like, stops being a whiny baby... And becomes like the most powerful character in the show mm -hmm. for a while. Like he surpasses Vegeta and his dad, and he goes like Super Saiyan two when he's fighting Cell. And then they do the huge Kamehameha battle, mm -hmm. and that's just really cool. The end. I like Cell Saga, <laughs> and then everything after that is kind of lame. Boo, in my opinion. Yeah, Boo Saga. Ugh. I mean, like Super Saiyan three is cool. Fusions are cool, like Trunks and Goten are cool, mm -hmm. but like Majin Buu is just so lame. And there's so many of those filler episodes where like him and Hercule are hanging out, mm -hmm. and he's like trying to like turn him into like a good person, and it's like, ugh, like just kind of seems like they're grasping at straws there. 
and then man, it's been so long. And then DBZ is over. <laughs> yeah. After that, and I've still never made it all the way through Dragon Ball GT. Yeah. Yeah, I can't stomach it. I like. I want to. I want to see Super Saiyan Four. But I've just. I've never. I've never made it more than like a couple episodes in before I'm just like, all right. That's enough of that. But yeah, <laughs> that was before I'd ever seen all of Dragon Ball. So maybe now that I've seen all of Dragon Ball, it might entice be more uh, attractive to me. I don't know. Bag's full. Next time on the boys. We'll empty it. We're going to finish this floor. We'll empty the bag. Wrap it up. We're going to get rid of all our items. Wrap it up. I take it. <laughs> That's my new frog uh, singing voice. All right. You heard it here. It's kind of like on the boys. It's like Kermit the Frog meets George Thorough.